Luca Varotto. So Luca is a PhD student in the Department of Information Engineering in the University of Padova. And his main interests are on computer vision, autonomous system, sensor networks, sensor fusion, and intelligent control. In the meanwhile, Luca, you can prepare yourself. So today, Luca will present a work, uh, Rapid Pass, I guess, so radio visual, probabilistic, active sensing. Thank you, Luca. Thank you, Julia, for the introduction. So uh, good afternoon, everyone and thank you to attend this talk. I'm Luca Varotto from the University of Padova, and I'm developing with my supervisor, uh, Professor Angelo Cinadese, a new framework uh, referred to RaviPass, uh, so radio visual probabilistic active sensing uh, that will be discussed in the first part of this uh, talk. In the second part, instead, I will uh, provide an overview of a possible application, uh, namely the transmitter discovery. So first of all, let's start with the framework of RAPIPAS. Uh, RAPIPAS stems on the active sensing paradigm. So the, um, the control of a perception process um, with the aim of gaining informative data from the sensors on board or to complete a certain task. And the reason why active sensing is uh, widely used in literature is that it enables autonomous perception in robotic systems and it uh, always um, or, or better often uh, performs better than passive counterparts. An example is given by uh, pan uh, or pan tilt cameras that regulate their field of view in order to track um, a certain target. Active sensing becomes probabilistic when uh, data collected on board are used to, um, to generate and keep updated a probabilistic map that drives the perception process and the control of the perception, perception process. And the, um, the reason why probabilistic approaches are used is that they allow to account for uncertainties, nuisance in the, uh, in the uh, data collection process and model dynamics also. Uh, moreover, they increase the adaptivity levels uh, during the decision-making process. Probabilistic approaches uh, become multimodal when the belief map is generated according to multiple sources of information, like for example, uh, an aerial platform or a ground platform with a camera and uh, acoustic, um, acoustic devices on board. And the multimodal approaches usually uh, increase the parallelization, the robustness and the complementarity, the complementarity of, the, uh, of the approach. In this talk, uh, I will uh, more specifically focus on a, on an implement on a radio visual implementation of multimodal approaches. Radio visual is justified by the complementarity between visual only and radio only approaches. In particular, both visual and radio only approaches are pervasive in our daily life. Uh, visual, in particular, visual information is uh, rich uh, in the way uh, informative is gathered, and it is usually uh, very highly ac accurate but cameras suffer from occlusions and they are usually very energy harvesting sensors. On the other hand, instead radio sensors provide scalar information. So uh, sparse, uh, not rich information with a limit on the accuracy. Um, but the benefit of radio information, radio sensors is that their range is quite large usually and sometimes also omnidirectional and the energy uh, consumption is controlled and efficient. RaviPass is uh, used can, or can be used in uh, mobile, uh, collaborative mobile robotics like autonomous warehouse sy systems or uh, in heterogeneous robotics, but also in other frameworks like uh, environmental mapping, search and rescue, wildlife monitoring, and such in our case, transmitter discovery. So let's move to the second part of this talk, um, transmitter discovery problem. We are, uh, we are using a, um, platform, a sensing platform composed by a camera, pan camera, and two uh, receivers, radio receivers, one directional and the other one omnidirectional, isotropic. Um, the state of the platform is the camera pan angle, while the dynamics is a Markovian linear and deterministic uh, dynamics, where the movements are controlled by a, a control input UT. 
The platform is, is uh, surrounded by end targets, which are static in line of sight and with same appearance. So they are all people, in our case, are people or markers. Like in industrial scenarios, they can be IR markers. And one of these targets um, is a transmitter. So it can communicate with, the with both receivers uh, inside the platform. The transmitter is indicated and labeled with the index I star from one to N. And the problem therefore becomes a problem of correct labeling. So we want to give an I at uh, as the estimate of the label of the transmitter label, we want this quantity to converge in time to I star. This problem can be under the line of sight condition. This problem can be uh, cast to uh, an association task on top of a localization problem. So we solve, uh, we first solve a localization problem by estimating the angular position of the target of the, ta of the transmitter. Uh, and this angular position is gamma hat. And once we have this estimate in hand, we can associate the transmitter label to the closest target. To this aim, we need to model the perception on board. First of all, we model the visual perception according to the probability of detection of a target, which is essentially a function of the distance between the uh, platform and the target itself. An example is provided below. So the, the probability of detection is uh, constant for a certain, a certain range of distances and then decreases when the distance uh, increases. Radio reception, perception instead is uh, um, supposed to be the, uh, the signal strength. So the RSSI value, which is a noisy version of a deterministic quantity. The deterministic quantity RT is uh, composed by, a, by two function, G, which is a, a nonlinear function of the distance between the platform and the transmitter, and Barrow, which is a misalignment uh, gain, which accounts for the misalignment between the antennas, between receivers and uh, the transmitter. So the contributions of our framework is that, first of all, radio-only solutions uh, rely only on RSSI data, which are um, noisy and ambig ambiguous in their uh, information provided on the transmitter position. So they have usually bad localization results. On the other hand, our approach, is, our approach provides a multimodal uh, solution, which as mentioned before, reduces the ambiguities and is more robust to noise and nuisance in the perception process. Secondly, the, uh, the, the era, era of only um, solutions rely on the two, the two functions, G and Barrow, which are unknown before, and so they need to be estimated, but this usually requires a very extensive training process. So we propose a self-supervised methodology that doesn't need to estimate G or Barrow, and it requires a minimal human intervention. The methodology that we propose is based on a two step. It's made on two steps. Uh, the first one is a you know, flying step in which we learn the probability of detection of a certain target according to the RSSI data gathered at the platform side. And we perform this according to our Gaussian process regression process. And the second step instead is, is the online effective uh, localization step performed with the Bayesian optimization. So uh, starting from the first part, we model the probability of detection as function of the RSSI as a Gaussian process, and we can we can train uh, we can learn this function with a data set D, which is composed by uh, couples uh, in which the input is the RSSI uh, value collected at the uh, at the isotropic uh, receiver, and the label is the empirical probability of detection that the camera can compute. Uh, importantly, this data set is completely automatically acquired since there is no human intervention. Uh, the only thing that we require is the human, human cooperation since we need the target and the human to, um, to move in front of the cameras and to obviously wear a certain transmitter like in the experiments we did. In the second, in the second phase instead, we formulate uh, the, the localization problem as, a, as an optimization problem since the transmitter satisfies a certain optimization constraint uh, in which the const function accounts for two modules. The first one is a, det is a detectability module. So we want the 
solution to satisfy the same detectability of the transmitter. Obviously, this is unknown, so it must be estimated. Um, but also the, um, the misalignment gain uh, must be maximized. So we need to have a certain alignment between receiver and transmitter. And this means that we are essentially looking at the transmitter. Unfortunately, the uh, misalignment function is unknown. So we are, we are taking a black box, black box optimization. So we propose a Bayesian optimization approach in which the cost function is, is approximated with a probabilistic surrogate model, which is also in this case, a Gaussian process, uh, which works in this case as probabilistic map. That's why this approach is probabilistic. Then we fuse together the information uh, collected by the three sensing units. In particular, we fuse the uh, isotropic information with the cameras in order to retrieve the probability of detection of the target. And then we compare together this observation in order to uh, retrieve the probabilistic map. And once this probabilistic map is uh, estimated and reconstructed, uh, and a certain acquisition function um, can be used to uh, drive the platform towards the next, the next movement. And once this movement is done, we can finally uh, compute the actual localization estimate, which is essentially a, a maximum posteriori uh, estimate on the actual probabilistic map. Regarding the results that we obtained, we proposed two metrics, one for the first part, the offline one, uh, which is the coefficient of determination in order to account for the quality of the regression process. And the second metrics instead is related to the discovery rate of a Monte Carlo experiment with 50 tests. Uh, this discovery rate is essentially, uh, from a probabilistic pers perspective, is uh, the empirical probability of identifying the true target as the uh, underlying transmitter. So it's an efficiency uh, metric. We propose also the comparison with two baselines. Uh, first of all, a radio only baseline. So the architecture is the same, but we don't account for the probability of detection. So we neglect uh, the camera information, the isotropic information. In the second um, baseline, instead, we proposed another rapid pass approach, but with just one receiver. In, in particular, we neglected the information collected by, collected by the directional receiver. Regarding the uh, regression offline phase, we, uh, we can see that the, uh, from a simulative um, experiment, uh, which is mandatory in this case, since we, we obviously don't know in real life the ground truth or the probability of detection, we get a, a regression score, which is very close to one, which is the maximum. So the regression is quite good, even though the um, the, the red markers, so the, uh, the samples are quite noisy. Uh, anyway, the Gaussian process regression is quite robust to this kind of, of noise. Instead, for what regards to the detection rate, so the localization and identification problem in the online phase, uh, we get a qualitative behavior, which is quite similar between the three algorithms under comparison, but the quantitative results are quite different. And in particular, we will see that our approach is far better than the other two. In particular, at the beginning, we have a sparse sampling, sampling of the search domain. So the detection rate is obviously very low since the localization is wrong. Anyway, the, um, the surrogate model is very, has a certain uncertainty, a large uncertainty in itself, so it drives a certain explorative behavior for the platform, and therefore a, um, um, a great amount of uh, information is collected, which drives uh, to, an, um, to a remarkable increase in the, de in the detection rate. Finally, when enough information is collected, the uh, uncertainty uh, on the belief map is reduced, and so the exploration behavior gives space to the, to the exploitation, uh, which drives to a plateau in the detection rate. And finally, we can drive conclusions. So the proposed approach, uh, the B radio visual approach, uh, achieves a, um, a higher uh, detection rate, approximately 92% uh, against approximately 60% of the other two, with a very fast exploration phase. So we can conclude that our approach is uh, uh, very efficient in terms of 
uh, speed in the exploration phase, but also in terms of accuracy and stability and robustness of the final result. Moreover, we don't need to calibrate any data set since it is uh, automatically acquired by the platform. Obviously, we need more hardware since we need to synchronize the receivers with the cameras and we need two receivers. Currently, we are working on cluttered environments with dynamic targets inside. And from a more general perspective, uh, multimodal probabilistic RT sensing is a current research line in our Sparks research group. Um, and we are always looking for uh, new collaborations and new ideas in order to, um, to foster our current um, projects and ideas. With this, I'm done and thank you for your time. Thank you, Luca, for your very interesting presentation. Me personally, I found very interesting in your previous slide, uh, if you can go exactly, no, no, uh, the one next. Exactly. Um, so essentially, uh, the plan to study uh, the role of the topology, right? The topology estimation, large scale sensor networks. Uh, we have already a plan now, what? Uh, yeah, we are working with um, the, uh, the airport of Venice in order, in order to, um, the project is to estimate the topology of the camera networks in their uh, scenario. Um, and to do, the, to do this, we need also to reduce the model of the network since they have some hundreds of cameras inside. So we are using some deep learning to reduce the dimensionality of the model and then we perform um, topology estimation. So the inference of the topology. Very interesting, yeah. Okay, great. So thank you so much.